Today I'm going to show you what's inside of a hybrid car's AC compressor and how it works. Now this compressor is out of a Toyota Prius and you can see it's completely electrically driven and that's because when the combustion engine's turned off in hybrid mode we need to keep the compressor running so it uses alternating current to do so. In comparison traditional EC compressors use a dry belt on the front of the engine but we'll take a look at that later. Now this Prius has a 201 volt hybrid battery and that goes to an inverter which turns it into three phase alternating current. I do have a video on how that hybrid system works linked above so you can check that out. Now the inverter can control the frequency of those alternating currents in order to control how fast this thing turns and how much the input and the output is. If you check out my video on how HVAC systems work, you got your input and your output to the compressor here where refrigerant gas is going to go in, it's going to get compressed and come out as a compressed gas before heading out to the condenser. Alright, so it looks like we've got a bunch of 8mm bolts, so let's take those off so we can see what's inside. Cool. Taking a look down inside this compressor, the first thing you'll notice is that there's a lot of oil here, nice and thick for good lubrication. Inside of here you can see we've got a ball bearing and that's for the electric motor that's inside of here. And if you look closely you'll see that there's this little pin over here, but it's actually offset from where the center of that motor is. And that's because it's going to drive the compressor's eccentric drive. Now that pin, because it's offset from the center of the motor, is going to plug into here and it's going to rotate this piece in sort of an orbital shape. It's not directly spinning it around and that's what's going to create the compression. Now if you look here, this is your input over here and that's going to feed to this hole over here where AC gases are going to come into the perimeter. Of course because you have a rotating mass we have a counterweight over here to counter the vibrations. And inside of here you've got these chambers and it is full of pag oil which is typical for most AC compressors. You can see it's a really thick kind of oil here. I am going to use my brother's old shirt here. It's kind of a thicker winter shirt and just wipe that up. The oil generally stays inside these chambers inside the compressors because it is a bit heavier than the gas that flows through it. So you don't really have to add oil very often. By the way, I'm filming this in the middle of winter. By recycling his shirts, I can force him to go out and buy new ones. Especially that he's going to need it in the winter. Let's take a look at how the AC gases flow through this compressor. Over here on the casing we have the input. That gas is going to come in through the perimeter down around over here and into this compressor wheel. As we said before, this internal wheel here is going to rotate in an orbiting motion like this as opposed to a rotating motion like this. Now what that's going to do is from these holes over here it's going to suck in some AC gases that are coming in from the compressor and it's going to bring it into this perimeter part over here where we have this gap. Now when the AC gases are in this gap here this compressor wheel is going to come along and squeeze those gases you can see as it's going to push that gas in and around here into the spiral and that's going to eventually suck it in and behind this wheel over here. Now this thing is just going to keep going around and around as it keeps sucking in gases and obviously the faster that you rotate the motor the faster this is going to rotate and the more it's going to draw gas in. Now out at the back here is your output you can see we've got three little fingers here that kind of form valves and there's even a little filter thing over here and that's going to bring the output into this little chamber over here. This D-shaped chamber here has a pipe that's going to lead straight to your output that's going to go to the condenser. All right let's knock this off here. There you go and here we can see the scroll inside. Taking a look inside of these scrolls here, you can see that we've got these two spirals. This one is the one that's orbiting with the motor inside of this casing here, which is stationary. As that moves around, it's going to squeeze the gas as it pushes it around inside of the scroll here, down through that hole over here, which goes to that center chamber. Remember, this thing is only orbiting inside of here, so it's creating a gap for the gases to come in through here, then it's pushing it down through here, and then it goes back this way so that it creates a gap again. So essentially, it's kind of like breathing, but it's just going sort of a back and forth in the orbital matter. Now this is a Denso compressor so I'm assuming it's the original. This car had about 500,000 kilometers on it before I took it apart and you can see that there are some wear marks on the inside here but overall not too bad for that mileage. Remember this entire thing has that really thick oil to help lubricate it and this is probably in pretty good condition with just minor wear. Alright now we're going to move on to the motor side of things here and you can see there's these two little washers over here and that's just to keep the counterweight in sync. This is supposed to rotate but of course there's a permanent magnet in there so I can't do it by hand. Let's just soak up some of that oil there from my oily fingers. Uh, it looks like Toyota is using some kind of a poly dry fastener as a security fastener on this high voltage connector. Alright, I hammered on my socket, see if we can get that off. Nope. Okay, got both of them off. Let me pop off this connector here. You can see it just has three connectors on it for U, V, and W for the three phases of your AC current. The other and this wire plugs into the inverter. More on that later. Alright, let's see if we can get this rotor out of here. Ah, looks like the magnet's holding it in. All right, let me pull it out like this. Hey, there we have the rotor. Here you can see we have the rotor with a permanent magnet over here. They're just held together by a bunch of rivets with some steel plates. 
Over here you can see the bearing as well as the pin that's offset to it. That bearing is pressed into this aluminum flange here. Notice that there's also these little counterweights riveted on there as well in opposite directions. Taking a look at the compressor casing you can see inside of here we have a brushless motor. Down at the back there we have a bearing that says Koyo Japan on it. And then of course on the flange here we have our front bearing. So both of these are supported by ball bearings. Looking down through the input here you can kind of see the coil inside of there. That means the gases are actually flowing through this electric motor's coils and all the gaps inside of here before going out to the compressor part which sits inside of this casing here. Inside of the casing here we have a brushless motor, it's three phase alternating current. You can see we have white, black and red wires going to the set of coils. There's a total of 18 little cores inside of here, each of them having their own coil to give you a fairly good resolution. Now depending on how fast you switch those coils, that's how fast this rotor is going to spin with this magnet on it. So this here is the plug that plugs into here. Here's a snap ring holding the plug in. Now of course this coil is pressed in there and I can't and get it out and you want it to be pressed in there because you don't want any of those to touch the rotor while it's spinning at high speed. Now you're probably wondering where the other side of this AC compressor plugs into. Taking a look at the circuit that drives this compressor, we start with our hybrid battery at the back of the car with 201 volts DC. It's going to come over here past the capacitor and into the integrated bipolar transistors. These are the ones that are going to form an AC wave in three different phases. you got three sets over here for U, V, and W. And then that's going to go out to the compressor in order to feed it and turn it at a certain speed. Over here we have all the administrative stuff that's going to be controlling that circuit, telling it how fast to turn it and when to turn it on and off, depending on the conditions inside the vehicle for the AC demand. Now this circuit is located inside the inverter module on the bottom. Of course, any transistors has to get cooled off, so the inverter has its own cooling system in order to cool those electronics. I'm going to use my little three pound press here to take the rotor off of this flange here. You can see this flange just has a bearing inside. And here we have the rotor. Let's see if I can take off some of these rivets here so we can take apart this rotor. Alright, so now that I've knocked these rivets loose, I'm just going to pull them out. Kind of look like nails. If you look inside of here, you can see these are the six permanent magnets that go around, forms a hex shape. And you can see that there's these thin metal plates here that kind of hold the whole sack together. Let's see if I can knock these plates apart. And here you can see the magnet that I kind of broke off. But these magnets are all being held together by these little steel plates. There you go. And here's the cross section of those little steel plates. And here you can see the little steel plates as I pull them apart one by one. And the magnet runs the full length of it. Or does it? Another part of the magnet here. And before we conclude the video, let's take apart this other compressor here so we can have a comparison of how a traditional one works. This is a brand new one out of a 2020 Chevy Spark. You can see the main difference here is the drive. You've got this pulley here which is going to be spun by the accessory drive belt and then this here is the clutch. Currently this wheel is free spinning but when this clutch engages and you add 12 volts here, it's going to suck in this tiny little gap here and that's going to cause both of these to rotate together and then your clutch is going to be engaged. The reason why there's a clutch and you don't always drive the AC compressors all the time is that compressors take up a lot of power in order to rotate the scroll wheel and compress all of that fluid inside of there. So in order to disengage it you're going to save a lot of power and fuel economy. Let's take off this clutch bolt and you can see the clutch has got a friction surface over here and a friction surface over here. Now this one is being driven by the engine and this one here is going to be splined to the input shaft over here. Now it looks like we do have a snap ring over here so I'm going to have to get my snap ring removal tool to take that off. I don't know where that went. Now we should be able to pop this clutch off or maybe I need a puller. Got a puller on here. There we go. Now this here is just a freewheeling pulley that sits on top of the clutch. You can see it's got its own bearing over here. Finally over here we've got a giant electromagnet. Computer is going to apply 12 volts to these two wires here and that's going to create an electromagnetic field which is going to suck this plate in and make the AC compressor turn on. Now there is another snap ring buried in here but I've had enough of snap rings for today. Alright, we're going to take off these 8mm bolts from the back here so we can see what's inside. Let's take this apart here. Taking a look inside of this compressor here, first of all I noticed there's no PAG oil inside of here, which is a little weird because this compressor is pretty much brand new with only 2,000 kilometers on it. Now if I hook it up to the drill here, you can see how it's going to rotate off-center. It's pretty cool. As I increase the RPM, I can definitely notice a lot of vibrations coming from this thing. Now just like the hybrid, this wheel here is going to sit inside of this wheel. And as it's doing that reciprocating motion, we've got the input which is over here on this side, which is going to provide that AC gas to the perimeter out over here. 
That gas is then going to follow outside the compressor wheel over here. And using this orbital motion over here of the stationary part, it's going to swirl it around to the center point over here while compressing those gases going to the outlet over here. Now compared to the hybrid one, you can see this one is much smaller and thinner. So it probably needs to spin at a much higher RPM in order to compress the similar amount of fluid that this one would need to compress. And this one here uses these little gaskets so that they don't rub up against each other and create too much friction so that they don't wear out. Whereas the hybrid one didn't do that. In principle these AC compressors are all the same the only difference being the clutch drive for the mechanical one versus the electric motor drive for the hybrid one. One of the benefits of collecting scrap engines in the yard is that you get more AC compressors. This one's out of a 2018 Jeep Wrangler so you can see it's a lot bigger than the other two. All right I got the clutch off I'm gonna remove all these bolts. This one has green sauce inside. This is a variable AC compressor. This one's different. Okay, I'm just going to use my brother's old shirt again. Wipe all this green sauce down. This is probably PAG oil plus dye inside of here. Let's pull this apart here. Oh, this is so cool. Yo, look at the pistons inside of there. Now this here is a variable AC compressor. Now I have a way more detailed video on how variable AC compressors work. So you're going to want to check that out. I'm just opening this up so you have a quick comparison to that hybrid AC compressor. Essentially we have our similar clutch just like the other AC compressors. And as I rotate this, you can see this plate over here is also rotating. Now we have seven pistons in this case and we have seven cylinders which are in this case and they're going to be moving up and down. At the back here we have a valving system to control the flow. Now what happens is according to demand the computer is going to send a signal out to this valve over here and that's going to determine how much these pistons are going to go up and down within their cylinders. Now in order to control that we have this plate over here. Now in this case you can see it's completely fat at zero degrees and that's why these cylinders are not moving any up and down. Now if this plate here were to change angles slightly and be like say at 30 degrees that means that the pistons at the top here are going to be at their higher compression stroke and the pistons at the bottom here are going to be at their lower compression stroke so now if this plate here rotates and now the 30 degrees is let's say on this side that means this guy is going to go up and that guy is going to go down and you can see as it rotates it sort of wobbles as it goes and that's what's going to cause these pistons to move up and down within their cylinders and to compress the AC refrigerator now I'm just going to pop all this stuff off here so we can look inside you can see we have the housing over here look inside of here we have a thrust bearing against that housing Housing. This is the input shaft that connects directly to the AC clutch when it's engaged. And you can see the pistons over here. These pistons have little balls on them. Oh, look, you can see they're actually flying out. If I take off all of these guys here, you can see that we have this plate which is going to move at an angle. I always have to use this cloth to dry my hands because I'm going to smell like pag oil tonight and my wife's not going to want to sleep with me. The little pistons here have these little bearings at the bottom here and they're made of a very lightweight aluminum that move back and forth in the cylinder. And of course inside of here we have that plate which is going to change angles. It's got a spring loaded mechanism to do so and it's got connected directly to the input shaft over here. You can see at maximum position it's about maybe 30-35 degrees and it's got spring loaded to bring it back to the zero position where none of the cylinders are going to move and then you can disengage the clutch. And that's a look inside of a couple of different types of AC compressors and how they work. Make sure you subscribe if you want to see more videos just like this one.